Good morning. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Today we're going to talk about cast sheep, creep feed, and feeding hay to sheep. Plus we're going to see how long it takes to actually roll out a bale of hay. And we're going to talk about high capacity sheep and a lot more. Let's get started. I'm going in with the Suffolk pregnant ewes right now because Arnie told me we had somebody cast again. So I just want to make sure that everybody's up and eating and not having any ill effects from being upside down for a little while. This, one, this one's laying down here but she was chewing her cud so I'm not, not worried about her. You are okay, right? I saw you chewing your cud. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Hi. Yeah, she got a poke. You hate to disturb them, but I don't know which one was cast, so I thought I'd better disturb her just to make sure if she can get up okay like that she's fine and when I walked in the barn that one was chewing her cud so as I look around this barn I don't see any problems if you get to a cast sheep soon enough there isn't usually a problem but if they're on their backs for hours they can uh, bloat up and die from that so you don't want that to happen. Talk to you about being cast before. I don't have a you to show you an example of it, which is good. But um, right now these suffix are quite heavy because of being pregnant. So if at night see the feeders a little bit higher than down here, if they get a, on even the slightest bit of an incline, then when they fall asleep, sometimes they'll be in such a deep sleep that they kind of roll over a little bit. And if a sheep rolls over and gets actually on her back, especially heavy sheep like this that have big wide bodies, then they're kind of like an upside down turtle. They can move around and kick and stuff, but they can't right themselves. And that's the, that's the problem that happens. Here's a girl who's looking quite chubby right now, and she's got some udder developing there. So, uh, especially when they're pregnant, we don't see it very often when they're not pregnant, but we uh, check the barns a little more carefully to make sure nobody is laying upside down. We've got a cloudy, dreary day today, but as you can see when you look around, we got puddles, all the snow's melted, so we're not gonna complain here. But I see we got a lot of feeding to do this morning. We are putting some creep feed into the containers at the front of the barns for the lambs. And we got a few bales of hay to feed as well, which of course is a great attraction for all the lambs, as you well know. So here we come with our grinder mixer. Those of you who have been watching for a while have seen us do this many times. We mix our own creep feed in that and it grinds it up a little bit to the texture we want it to be ground at. So the corn is cracked. The barley basically stays whole. And we've got some roasted soybeans in there as well. And a little bit of decoct. We add a detox pellet in here as well, just to help prevent toxidiosis. But rather than bringing creep feed over to the barn every day, we have these little bins. The lambs don't eat out of those bins, but we have them at the front of the barns where there's lambs. And that way Ernie can just uh, use those buckets there and scoop it out and put it into these feeders. And it's really handy. He doesn't have to walk 
far with it. But it's just an auger that pulls the grain out of that mixer. So this is what it looks like. It's a nice little cereal mash here. And how long will this bin last these lambs? Well, it's hard to tell because we're eating more every day. Uh, this bin will probably last me, uh, I don't know now. Well, I guess, I, I, I guess we can see. So today, today's the 25th of November. We'll see how long this lasts before this one, he does it again. If this is full, it's about 800 pounds. And I think I filled this five times already. That's how much just consuming. Pretty bad. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> I'll make it real quick. We used to have, uh, we grow our own grain, all our own grains. And uh, I used to buy grain in a 10 ton tank. And what would happen is, I would order like 10 tons, the tank would be full, and then the next month I'd order another 10 tons, and the tank would be about four feet from the top. And I couldn't understand, I thought it was getting ripped off like the grain, eh? But you know what it was? When they had local grain, some of the grain wasn't very good, it was light, it was a poor quality grain, so the bend was not as full, was fuller because of weight. Poor quality grains weigh less, and when I had real good quality grains, there'd be less volume in the tank. And I quickly realized that the feed was very inconsistent. And at that point, we set our own mill up, and now we only have good grains, we never deal with any bad grains. And when you say bad grains, this is what they do. There's nothing wrong, it's just business, okay? I'm probably talking too fast, I know. But at the ports in Prescott, where the, where the Lakers come in to export the grain out of the country, they won't tolerate anything but high quality grain. So all the bad grains go into cow feed, which makes sense. But in, in Canada, it stays here instead of it being right. exported. All the bad grains stay into cattle feed. All the good grains are exported. And I, know, I understand that, but when we put our own mill up, I won't take any bad grain anymore, but we grow our own grain anyhow. But that's one of the reasons why uh, years ago, 30 years ago, we had our own grain system because I had, I wanted to pick my own quality of grains. And that's probably, that's probably, you know, that's probably too, some people would say it's probably too good for sheep. <laughs> Should be a little bit less, but. Nothing's too good for sheep. Just a small story. But, uh, yeah, it makes sense. And a lot of times when you send your stuff to the mill, if you send it right to the feed store, they just send back somebody else's That's stuff right. so uh, you really have to watch that and same with people who are sending their wool to mills to get it processed into yarns and stuff you really have to know the the person who runs the mill because in the past when I had Shetlands I did have my wool made into yarns and rovings and there they wouldn't guarantee that it was actually my sheep because they have so much coming in they can't be bothered filtering out little bits so if you really want your own stuff you have to be there and kind of supervise to make sure you actually are getting your own and Arnie was talking about the quality grain not all farmers produce the same type of grain there is a skill in making it so if you can produce your own good quality grain then you want to go out of your way to make sure you keep it for your own livestock. You know, you know how, uh, you, hey, I got another story for you. You know how people go to church to worship their religion? You know what I mean? I understand that. Because it gives you it gives you a nice feeling. It gives you something to live for. But see, these little lambs, they worship the feed mixer because they know where the grain comes from. Yeah, that's right, Arnie. <laughs> that's their altar the, right the, there. The, the, the altar. Look that's at them all. Altar. And who's there? Number two. The biggest guy, he probably ate his share of the grain. Well, he's he's not taking a bottle anymore. He's self-weaned, which is kind of nice. I'd wean him off, baby. No. The others are still drinking. Look at these guys. See, they're all hungry and wanting to grow now. See how they're eating horse hay? But, see that? 
but I think they need a little bit of roughage. That hay is uh, quite soft. Yeah. And I think they need a little bit of roughage. See? See, so, look at them all. So you don't want to feed only coarse hay, and you really don't want to feed only really super soft hay that feels like uh, lawn clippings, because they need actually a bit of both. So this is really high, uh, high quality hay but it's lacking that roughage and the roughage is what makes their stomachs and rumens grind up. See this is the, this is the one with the sore mouth, so we can see her quickly. Right. See the engine there? Needs a little roughage. The engine needs roughage. <laughs> okay, we're gonna show the is little... Is that contagious? Yeah, it is. So you don't want to touch that because even humans can get it. But you see how it's scabbing over? It'll all fall off. Oh, yeah, I don't want it. it'll start to fall off. It's just like little scabs. But it's number nine. Remember, she is our little curious one. So far, everyone else is looking pretty good. And I was given the tip that you can put WD-40 on it. I'm not sure uh, if that's true or not, but I have heard that people have used that. But I figure you don't want to be touching it because it is contagious for you too. Remember, the engine. The engine. <laughs> Who's that one? She's number real. Two. Oh, that's the ram, okay. Yeah. He's a big boy. He's in his share of creek feet. He was a bottle baby. Are you not going to freak out? I don't want to be your friend. There, there you, go. you go. Run away. So, yeah, so we don't, we don't do anything with the sore mouth because, like I say, the scabs drop off. We'd rather not be touching around their mouths and risking getting it on us. You'd have to wear gloves and then the gloves... You couldn't wear them around other animals, so we just leave it. It drops off. It's um, we've never had a problem with it. I mean, you don't like it because it's it's more than anything. It's just nasty to look at. But I'm so far, I'm not seeing anybody else with it. Yeah, they, the the stress of weaning usually usually causes it. So when we take moms away, then you'll see an outbreak. Usually, not always. Some some years it's worse than others. And number nine would have been one of the earlier born lambs. And I'm wondering if her mom's weaning her off, and maybe that's why she has it. I don't know. But Arnie's taking that creep feed now and sprinkling it in here. They're to the point where <laughs> they don't want to leave, lose their spot, so they'll stay there. But that's all we do. We just take a bucket like that and sprinkle a layer in the trough. And if it's all gone by this evening, he'll feed more again. And if not, he'll know to feed a little less in the morning because we want to keep it fresh. We don't want mice and birds coming in here and eating it and pooping in it and stuff like that. That here is little Cupcake. She's eating it. They're all enjoying it now. When they were little, we sprinkled it with soybean meal on top as well, which uh, they really liked the taste of soybean meal. So if, if you put the soybean meal on top, just lightly, it encourages the lambs to start eating. Once they're all eating like this, all the younger lambs will at this point copy because they'll see what the flock is doing and they'll want to do the same thing. So we don't have to sprinkle the soy soybean meal over it anymore. There are soybeans already in this mixture for protein. The next thing we'll do, if you can see that the hay here is kind of, it's, you can see where they ate and it's kind of bridged up in the middle. So what we'll do now is we'll just take our hands and fluff it all up and that way they'll it'll reach those bars a bit better and they'll be able to
to eat it easier because right now with those tiny bars they can't reach it anymore that's why it's bridged up like that and people have suggested us maybe pulling every other bar out in this feeder and we've thought about it but we are really nervous about it because we did spend a lot of money on these feeders and when you take every other bar out it's actually big enough for them to stick their whole head in and now I'm gonna worry about lambs getting trapped again so I'm thinking we might just leave these ones They're they're really handy for what we do and we make sure we give fine hay in here and fluff it up so they can still reach it and climb over the feeders too. So I started to shake it out and sh when you shake it out like that, when you pick it up, it's actually, because it's being laying like that with weight on it, it it's actually kind of sticks together and that's why it's harder to pull out too. So if you shake it up, then it's easier for them to pull it out. And we do that for the ewes too, but not by hand. We'll use a fork and stuff if, if it's getting kind of congealed and they're not being able to pull it. They don't usually have so much of a problem. They should have been out here earlier. When I got in the boat, that's the time to be here. But they were just going... Oh, well, you should have waited. all waiting there in front of the gate. All of a sudden, the father got out. You should have waited for me. I know, it's too late. It's not a rush. Hi, you guys. See, so now that's what the feeders look like now. They're all puffed up. And it's much, now you can see they're pulling at the hay now, even though the grain's there. They want that hay as well. So they weren't eating the grain before because it was piled up and now they're eating it. The way you look at it is when I was younger and I used to be a chef, I used to always shake out the salad. I was a cook. Oh, I'm not going to tell you I was a cook. You're going to want me to start cooking now. Not funny? No, not. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a proud looking ewe lamb. And the ears pointed up a little, eh? That's the type we're looking for, you see? Nice legs, nice back, wool on the cheeks, wool on the head, ears pointed slightly above horizontal. Uh, trimming of wool around the ears, but not in the ears, just around. Here's another one too. A little longer ear on it, maybe? Maybe, but they're the right direction. So many are letting their ears point down. You don't want their ears pointing down. Well, Suffolk ears are heavy, they point down. Suffolk ears are supposed to point down. Dorset ears are supposed to point up. And you look lovely too. You guys. Look how easy you shake the feet up and uh, look at everybody now is uh, getting a mouthful. Didn't I just say that? Whether they need it or not. Didn't I just say that? Yeah. Did I? Arnie doesn't listen to me. That's my, that's and my the, witness. And then he, then he says it again like it's a novel idea. <laughs> that's, my, that's my weakness, Lynn. I don't listen, but, but, but Lynn, I'm a man. I can learn. We've heard that before, too. That's right. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> oh, here's one of the little peewees, oh, but she's working hard at it. Yes, Look at her grow. But no engine. And here's her brother, I think. No engine. Yeah. But, you know. That's a Volkswagen. It, it happens. <laughs> Volkswagen? That's a Volkswagen. No, it's those, uh, what, I used to have one of those little three-cylinder cars. Really? Uh, yeah, and it was actually pretty good. It was good on gas, but it couldn't pass on the highway. That's right, you can't pass on the highway. That's right. <laughs> you can't pass on the highway. Yeah. Oh, that was a That's nice one that ch jumped in here. Yeah, those are. Now that they're eating on their own, you'll see the difference and see how they grow on. This is all up to the lambs now because moms are slowly, slowly starting to produce less and less milk because um, the lambs have basically started nursing them dry. That's what we want. We would prefer that the lambs dry the ewes up. But see, you can't even put an engine in that the lamb. Okay. It, hasn't, it hasn't got a okay. frame to put an engine in. Let's not focus on them, poor little things. We'll find a pet home for them. Well, 
So that's the feeding of the lambs. Now we'll show the feeding of the ewes. And what kind of hay is this? First cut. Uh, a little bit of alfalfa in it. And some grasses, mostly grasses. And it's wrapped hay. Yeah, and these are pregnant Suffolk ewes. Don't pray! Why would you do that? Why, that little lamb just wanted to see you. That's not good. Why would you do that? Did you not want that lamb eating your food, maybe? Can we see that tattoo? G, you, you're a G, you silly girl. Talk about being protective about your food. Jeez. So basically, these this is just the dregs left in here. So we're just gonna roll the next bale over top. Hi, this is Snappy's group. Come on, Katie, get out. Come on, Lammy, move out of the way. Move out of the way. Come on. There we go. Oh, we got more. Once he's cut all the strings off the bale, it's just a matter of rolling it out. So I'm going to let him roll it out right to the end to see how long this process takes. So it's, well, it was 110 on my reader here, my timer on the phone, and we'll see. And we've got about, well, yeah, 100 sheep in here right now. Every now and then you have to stop because the pieces of hay, they kind of interlock and twine, so you have to loosen it up sometimes. And some bales roll out really easily and they don't stick together at all as it rolls out. And others can be quite sticky, but this is, this is like average. He's still rolling, so I'm going to wait. I'm not going to say he's done yet. And this barn is, this barn's 160 feet long because this is the old coverall, so it's narrower, but okay, he's done and it's 120. Sorry, 220. So it took a minute and 10 seconds to roll out a bit to feed a hundred sheep a bale of hay. Not too bad. So at a minute and ten seconds that basically works out to less than a second a sheep to feed them. What's the story in these two first ones here, honey? <laughs> what? What's the story in those two? One's probably a Jordan U. And that we need to put Hannibal on her, the big one. And the little one is probably from Drew, who is a British ram. And that's what happens. So, actually those are an example of the, of, like that you there is way too tall. Probably we showed her, or she would do well in a show, because she's got good confirmation and stuff. But we don't want them any taller than that. She's obviously in good shape. So she's not having problems staying in shape with all the rest. But we don't want them that big. We prefer this size. This is the more medium size. So maybe the little Drew one is a bit shorter than we like. 
this one's a bit taller and this one's right on I'd say it wouldn't you say that one's right on and most of the, and you'll see if you go look at the line you'll see we're pretty consistent but every now and then you'll see like over here you'll see one whose back is a little taller than the rest I don't think that sheep is as tall as you think it is I think that's a massive that sheep has a what's that sheep have on it she has an engine but she, she an but she is tall Arnie she's massive in in every aspect so she's like a hummer and you always say hummers are overkill <laughs> she's well, she's, uh, she's a, a, she, you know, you a couple of those for foundation sheep hey? oh yeah no I'm not saying anything but we don't want to I what I said was that we don't want them any bigger than that that's the max and I we don't want even our majority to be like that we want them to be like this girl here better bones oh, yeah. better bone, better bone. wider bone but that's that probably the perfect sheep right there i just said that i'm repeating what you said honey. i know but uh yeah be, we want that we want that coarser bone and we're getting the coarser bone by breeding our tall ewes that will get that have finer bones onto our British rams. That's why I said that big ewe over there, wherever she is, she ran back there. She had finer bones, even though she had a massive body. So you saw Hannibal the other day with his big block feet. He's a perfect match for her, um, and will bring the lambs back to a better size because as soon as you put a British ram on the fine bone sheep they gain bone density now to be honest with you this is an older sheep heavy yeah and this is a young one uh, this one here i'm going to guess another year when it thickens up yeah it'll be a lot yeah better. she's probably a first timer but yes yeah, second third year they always look their best they're they nice. they're well filled out like this girl but she she that's that's the type of sheep we strive for good girl that one walking away there no, I wanted long tail. What about it? I was going to put a pretty good bet on that, but that's a Texan <laughs> influence. A little, well, bit, a little bit too much rump there for us. Huh? We sold, we sold 40 grades and crosses last summer. And we may be selling another 40 this summer. So I don't, I don't, right now these are pretty well mostly all suffix but we do have some unregistered ones in here still and a few that are crosses from way way back I mean unmeasurable almost for the uh, cross in here now since we're talking about sheep eating and high capacity sheep that can eat more and have a big engine another thing about, about those big bodied sheep Irregardless of the size or height of their legs, I'm talking body, and you can see we have really long, deep views here. One thing about that is you have hardly any birthing problems because they have room to hold those lambs and let the lambs get into a good position. It's those short-bodied, narrow ewes that you'll have lambing problems with. And that's why people always say, you never show any lambing. And we try to show lambing, but to be honest, most of them do it on their own. So we're not having to help them at all. And usually the only time you can film a sheep having a baby is when you have to help it. Um, last year, I'd say nine times out of 10, Arnie came in the barn and the lambs were already up. So, here's a big one. You're a big girl. And the reason we like our Suffolk and our Dorsets to be in the medium sized range, which we refer to as Canadian Suffolk, is because when they're too tall, too leggy, they become hard keepers because they need to eat way more food to maintain their condition. They're just too large. But we also don't like them really, really short because they are easy keepers, for sure, the shorter ones. But 
lambing problems are an issue because the lambs ultimately have to kneel down to nurse off a, off a short sheep and sometimes lambs can't figure that out which means we need to interfere and help out more often and our whole goal with the sheep is like we've said to keep things as simple as possible and simple not only means less technology and feeding more efficiently and handling more efficiently, but it also means not interfering with the sheep as often either, because if you have to, in the beginning when we had a lot of British style suffix, we were constantly kneeling down, helping them get on the udders. And that's when we brought in some taller ones to get a little bit of height on them so that when the lambs get up to nurse, their instinct is naturally to go kind of near that armpit. And that's where the udder is on the taller ones. And you may have noticed me limping and stuff when I walk around. I am limping because of the early days of being on my knees in jugs trying to get those lambs on those short legged sheep and I don't want to do that anymore. So there's pluses and minuses to everything but we do find that the middle road is the best. Poor Benny and Max are behind the gate because they were running around irritating the lambs so they're learning a lesson that they can run around and play with the lambs but they can't harass them. And you can see we got a rainstorm going to be coming in today. We still have snow drifts up the laneway there, but it's almost all gone. This barn doesn't need hay today, maybe tonight, but everybody is was hopping and jumping there. I don't know if you, I missed that or not on the camera, but they know that it's time for their grain ration anyway. Hi boys, we're going to have a storm I see. Hi big guys. just thought I'd let you hear what it sounds like when the curtains are flapping in the wind. So it's just like a tent. We've been really lucky, knock on wood. We've never had these tarp problems rip or blow down or anything. And you've seen some of the windstorms we've gotten through here. So they're a, remar a remarkably sound building. Well, we managed to get the chores done before the storm hits. And it looks like we're gonna get a big rainstorm this time, not a snowstorm. So from Lynn. And Arnie. Thank you for watching. And I hope you join us again tomorrow for the next day at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.